right. Hi everyone. Thanks for dialing in. Uh, this is uh, Zeev's deployment web series again, where we showcase the platform of Zeev, where how you can use it for your own project purposes, how it can help you, your project, to cut down costs, cut down your time to market uh, for whatever you're trying to build, whatever innovation that you're trying to do for yourself. And today we're going to go through Z platforms, general uh, bits, uh, a general overview of Z platform, if you would put it like that, where we would demonstrate what kind of features does it does it provide, what kind of services in general it provides, and how uh, you can leverage them. And if you have a little bit of time, maybe we can please touch upon a little bit of our current services, our current deployments, so you guys can have a little bit of an idea of what this platform is about. So without any uh, delay, I'll go ahead and uh, log in into one of my accounts here. And you can sign up uh, yourself and, and try all of this out uh, again yourself. Uh, so we've landed here onto the dashboard of C where you can see a bunch of details that have gathered here already. Um, I have some networks deployed, so you know it, it is giving me a notification that you can expand your consortium, you can share your private networks with other people and such. But you may see, uh, see some different bits here. I can see my total subscription with Zeek that is present here, the total number of nodes that I've deployed and such. So all of that is present here. I can see my cloud distribution as well. So. Zeev allows you two types of deployments. One is bring your own cloud, where you have the option of configuring your own cloud account. And the other is Zeev Manage, where you don't have to worry about any cloud details. You can go ahead and just uh, choose Zeev Manage and it will, Zeev itself will uh, take care of all the cloud requirements from itself. You don't even have to worry about what cloud it utilizes underneath. So uh, in case you're using the unknown cloud, uh, it will show you all those cloud specific metrics here. And uh, we can see another bunch of details. We have four workspaces here, four networks, nodes, endpoints, and clouds. Don't worry about all of this. If, if it doesn't make any sense, we'll be going about all of these uh, in just a moment. And we can also see some cloud-wise distribution. So I've got uh, one node of Binance, one, uh, or rather one network of Binance, one network, network of Fabric, and two networks of Polkadot at the moment. So it gives a little bit of distribution of whatever services that I'm currently using. A little bit of summary of my system health and other uh, aspects as well. Like if I have any open tickets, uh, are there any active and active nodes for my network? Any current existing warnings um, for my deployed services, networks, nodes, any products that I have, I have installed over it, any smart contracts or such and pending invites. Uh, for consortium, joining consortium or such. So I'll quickly first of all go to my settings section here just to give you guys an idea of what kind of configurations uh, you can do or you should do uh, before you start using these services. So a little bit of uh, profile section I can see of mine here which gives me a little bit of uh, username, password, all those kind of things. I can reset my password if I want. Uh, I can go to my, my cloud section where I can see all of my clouds that I've configured here. So the interesting thing about blockchain deployment is that, you know, uh, people don't like to give away the control of their blockchain nodes. And uh, that's very fair because uh, blockchain is supposed to be decentralized. And if you are looking for central hosting service providers, then you are, uh, you know, by default centralizing all of your services. So bring your own cloud allows you such a feature where you can just choose to um, keep your uh, services deployed into your own account at the end of the day while still uh, getting them managed through Z as a platform and tool. And especially in those use cases where enterprises have their own compliances on their own policies, they usually do not like to go away from such requirements. So if your project has such needs where they have to comply with a lot of those policies, bring your own cloud might be the very right choice for your uh, use case. So I here have configured a bunch of uh, clouds here. Uh, AWS DigitalOcean and GCP, you can do as well. And you can see one account I've configured. I can configure multiple accounts. Let's say if I want to add an AWS account, I just click this button. Whereas he would ask me the name, the access key and secret key of my AWS account. And I can give some label as well. And I can just click, go ahead and click my add account. So once I do that, um, it would add my account here and I can choose to use it from that point onwards for all of my deployments. 
Um, similarly, you can do the same for DigitalOcean uh, as well as for GCP. Um, uh, the terminology differs a little bit with GCP. You have projects as a terminology, so you can choose your project as well. And you can read all about this into our documentation, our digital documentation of how to configure your own account for purpose of consumption. Uh, the authentication mechanism, adding the account itself, uh, can differ with GCP and uh, DigitalOcean. It is auth based and uh, with AWS, it's programmatic access based. So look out for whatever capabilities is equal. It might be the case that some of the, uh, the capabilities are hidden to your account. But it might, it, if, if it is very much required for you, then we can also enable it for those very accounts while we launch it for everybody. And so, yeah. Uh, so that's on your account section uh, for clouds. Then we have credentials of our APIs. Zeev allows you to do all of that you do with the console also through terminals, through your CLI tools. So Zeev has its own CLI tool that you can use for the purpose of uh, deploying your network nodes, managing your network nodes. Uh, but also in case you want to have your CICD pipelines to deploy your smart contracts uh, for a uh, you know blockchain protocols like Fabric, Ethereum or such. And uh, it allows you to also uh, secure your APIs. So let's say if you're creating APIs, uh, you're creating endpoints for data APIs or blockchain, or let's say if you're creating APIs for configuring APIs for storing up your files on IPFS service or Z. So again, this is where API credentials comes in place. We'll represent those services separately, but uh, this is what, uh, you know, in general API credentials provide you. We can put down a name of our key. Uh, we can choose the service, whether it's network or uh, ZDFS, and uh, we can select all kinds of permissions at a granular level. Uh, for network, again, I can choose the networks that I want to create this key for, and I can choose what kind of permissions that I want to give whether it's running the pipelines, feeding the networks, all of those good things. Like, as you can see, I've got a, got a bunch of keys here present already. And uh, in the entirety of our series, we'll be doing a lot of operations using our uh, you know, API keys as well. Next, I'm gonna show you a little bit of subscription. So this is where you can manage your subscriptions that you have with Zeep. You can uh, look about the total, you can uh, also choose to unsubscribe, you can choose to increase your subscription, all of those actions you can manage from here. Uh, you can drill down and see all the services that you're using it for as well. So for Binance, what kind of different uh, add-ons and features you've, you've bought it for, the total subscribe quantity of the nodes, uh, all of that good. So this is where you can manage your subscriptions and then you have your activity logs where you can uh, check all the operations that you've done on the platform uh, very easily. Uh, with all the filters for uh, for your account. Next, I'd like to show you workspaces. So workspaces are a neat mechanism in Z, is how I like to put it always. Uh, it, it's for you to uh, manage your services, put your workflows into one place and manage it accordingly. So let's say if you have multiple projects ongoing, or let's say even if you have one, one of the, your projects has multiple environments, dev, staging, prod, pre-prod, you can manage all of those with the help of workspaces because it, it creates an encapsulation all of all of what you are using C for. So you can see I've got a bunch of workspaces here already and you can choose to create your own workspace with a simple click of a button just by giving it a name and a small description of what this workspace uh, might be about. So that's uh, a little bit of workspaces and if I just quickly open any of the workspaces here but let's say if I open public workspaces, I can see uh, some networks and also some endpoints uh, created uh, for my uh, for my purpose. And similarly, other work, uh, workspaces would have their own virtual services that I can uh, that might I might keep inside them. Uh, next, we can also talk about what are the actual offerings of C that you can leverage um, for your purpose. Before we jump into that, I'll just give a little background, you know, how we came about to, uh, you know, realizing the potential, the need uh, from all of you for such tools, uh, because we've been focusing for so many decades on web 2 based projects, web 2 based applications that we have very mature tool sets, capabilities to expand those projects without having to burn too much cost. But uh, Zeev, 
uh, is is perhaps the only way to do it in an efficient manner where you don't have to worry about the cost the tools the right standards of doing so and you can just use it as such so the major idea here is to cut down the on the cost side of things to cut down the time that it takes for you to set up production grade deployments and manage and scale them as well you know it takes a lot of time to create your private networks and then to expand your private networks to other accounts which would have their own uh, preferences of clouds uh, let's say if you start with AWS and they would rather prefer GCP or the Azure then those kind of complications might slow down your projects uh, practicality uh, your project scaling uh, and and it may impact your tight uh, deadlines and it may uh, increase your cost by quite a bit so that's what we try to uh, challenge with all the services that we provide uh, to bring them down as much as possible and by that account we have a bunch of services here present in our z platform that may benefit your uh, project needs starting from the top we have api endpoints that you can subscribe to you already have a free plan so let's say if you want to get started without having to set up a blockchain node in your local or even for your production grade application you can quickly go here and create an endpoint for yourself and you can use that endpoint to securely talk to a node and use it for whatever requirements that you have to do transactions to receive events from your blockchain uh, whatever that need is we support a variety of protocols already and you can sign up and you see for yourself uh, all the capabilities that it may serve you so i've got a bunch of uh, endpoints present here already and if i show you some endpoints here you can see how uh, you know uh, different uh, uh, services different methods are utilized for that very endpoint so it shows my current quota consumptions i can see that very endpoint itself the secure endpoint i can choose to improve the security by enabling certain features like public jwt uh, it also already has some features like api key and access threads uh, but you can improve uh, it further restrict it even more if you choose to do so uh, but we'll have probably have a, a separate uh, you know video uh, on uh, in depth for our api endpoints then we have dedicated nodes so a lot of times uh, it is a case that you don't want to use shared nodes and you want to have your dedicated node set up itself and definitely the case with uh, enterprise blockchain use cases where you have permissive blockchain nodes and you really cannot share the data of share sensitive data of one customer to another customer so you can deploy your dedicated nodes in a few clicks as well and every protocol has its own specific uh, configurations uh, which are required for its setup so z uh, you know tries to extract those configurations and provide you in the best possible way so it doesn't over complicate it and at the same time it gives you the best uh, configuration possible advanced configurations possible uh, to serve your requirement so every protocol you'll find will have their own specific configurations that you can use it for and uh, again i would suggest to follow our series of videos that we'll be publishing for each and every blockchain protocol here and also uh, you know you can do it yourself if you choose to do so so dedicated nodes allows you to uh, set up your nodes for your own dedicated requirement and you can again do it for two purposes either let z manage and worry about the cloud or you can configure your own cloud account uh to to you know not give away that kind of flexibility if you have z does not centralize any of these services in any ways uh your dedicated node is something you would interact to directly and there is no downtime that z can impose uh to your blockchain nodes which are dedicated for your own purpose so uh dedicated nodes are uh, such as that and there are a lot of monitoring and analytics benefits that we'll deep dive to uh as well in the upcoming videos for each and every protocol we also have staking nodes so uh, a lot of you might have the requirement to set up your uh, staking nodes for the purpose of uh, well staking and you can again choose various blockchain protocols that zip can support and we're adding more and more protocols as we see uh, popularity grow in web3 space uh, for uh, staking purposes so keep an eye out on this this is very easy a few clicks and you can start staking right away without having to worry about the technicalities without having to worry about the wallets and all the difficulties difficulties that come up with it so uh, and and you know with staking it's often the case that say if you have any downtime you are going to be impacted you you can be penalized quite immediately 
and immensely if you if you have that uh, kind of downtime so zeef ensures that you know it, you don't fall into those kind of traps uh, yourself and it takes care of uh, a lot of those things uh, on its side so that's what um, uh, staking notes allows you and at the same time we have got zdfs which is our one of our uh, very fancy services uh, it's basically managed ipfs given by z so let's say you might be using s3 bucket for your aws account which allows you to store your files your objects uh, inside aws and use them securely uh, with web3 it's often the case that people use ipfs which is decentralized file system storage it works in a very similar principle of seeders and leeches and you can use those services with z again without having to worry about uh, the infrastructure nuances or or the cost that you have to pay in order to maintain your ipfs services so uh, for zdfs we again provide you the endpoint based capability where you can choose to create just a shared endpoint or if you want you can also create a dedicated uh, node of ipfs and have your files uploaded uploaded from there itself we so take care of a lot of things uh, like replication factors making sure that your file is replicated into a, a, to multiple ipfs nodes at a time and uh this network is public at the very end of it so i would suggest that go through the documentation uh we again have this documentation available for zdfs as well uh that can help you get started right away. we have a developer plan which is very free for all of you folks it is very reasonable in terms of the kind of storage bandwidth uh it allows the kind of rate limiting it allows uh it is very uh, competitive as well so uh feel free to check it out start using it we have an sdk available for most of the languages as well that can that you can consume it for so that's the background of zia as a platform and i think we'll be covering one uh, big service that we're about to roll out as well uh, which should be data apis on z uh, we already have it on beta uh, launch available to some of our customers but we are very happy to launch it to everybody out there uh, who would be interested and the idea behind that is that you know blockchain nodes to not store data in an index format that you can do rich queries on and a lot of applications have this limitation uh, that deteriorates the user experience or they themselves have to implement a lot of capabilities on their side to provide that rich user experience so we'll be launching our data apis as well for uh, a lot of blockchain protocols which will give you that index data in just some api calls yourself so Yeah, I think that's a little bit of summary of Z. Uh, I would suggest to sign up, uh, use it by yourself. That's the best way to go about it. We have a good documentation, as I mentioned a couple of times. You can reach out to our support. Uh, feel free to follow us on all of our social handles. Uh, I would uh, highly recommend subscribing to our channel and uh, just hold on for our next bunch of videos that we'll be launching, maybe on the very protocol that you are. interested in and working on right now so thanks you thank you guys for joining and and i guess i'll see you in the next video thank you bye bye